Welcome. Welcome everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst. This meeting is being recorded. At a later date, it will be uploaded by our IT staff to the town of Amherst YouTube channel. At this point, I would like to welcome everyone and turn the meeting over to Alex Lefebvre, the chair of this outreach subcommittee. Great, thank you. So uh, seeing a quorum, I'm gonna call the meeting to order at four o'clock. I'm gonna perform a sound check and make sure that everybody can uh, hear and be heard. So with that, Anika? Here. Uh, Austin? Here. And Alex Lefebvre, I am here as well. Um, so pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meetings calendar on the Town of Amherst website or by dialing in by phone. The public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Okay, having that out of the way, um, I see uh, our person from Colliers who is not in fact Craig DiCarlo. <laughs> Hi, yes, I'm the Craig's new assistant project manager started about three weeks ago and Craig should be right behind me. We just jumped off another call. Okay, I think everybody's had a chance to meet you, but just in case, maybe just introduce yourself. Yeah, of course. Uh, oh, I see it made my name Craig DiCarlo again. My name is Will Fernandez. I'll change that so I don't confuse anyone. Thank you, Will. Um, Great. And I see we have uh, Craig here as well. So and there's the real Craig DiCarlo. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Welcome. And thank you for joining us. Um, so just uh, housekeeping, we have two sets of minutes that need to be approved. Um, would someone make a motion to approve the minutes of May 17th? Move to approve. Second. Second. Great. Um, any questions, comments about the minutes of May 17th? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll go ahead and have a roll call to approve the minutes. Anika? Yes. Uh, Austin? Yes. And Alex Lefebvre is also a yes for unanimous approval of minutes. Second set of minutes that were, we need to approve the second set, Angela, the June 8th set. Also, okay. So the June 8th minutes are the uh, public forum that we held that was an overview of the outreach um, and Angela typed up the sort of notes of that meeting. Um, so uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the June 8th public forum? Move to approve. Great, and a second. May I just ask a question, Alex? Uh, so there was a quorum of the committee present for the public forum? There was not because there was only Anika and I. So it doesn't, I, I'm sorry, since it's a public forum and no votes were taken, we're good with just um, referencing them, but we don't yep. need to approve them. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, Austin <laughs> and Angela. Okay, um, so number three on our item is the keeping the community informed. Um, so I think as folks know, we've been issuing a newsletter on a weekly basis. We've had four newsletters to date, and uh, it seems to be doing nicely. That's also getting sent out to town council, um, as well as the group of people who initially requested at our May 1 event to be included, as well as being pushed by the library and posted on multiple sites. Um, we have gotten, Craig, I don't know how, I don't know the last time you were in public comments, but we have 1,720 comments as of today, wow. 40, 469 unique comments. So that mm -hmm. also includes frequency. Um, so we've been getting comments in from actually all the methods, um, whether it's, I think we've had 44 contributors to the Padlet with 77 comments. We're also getting things from Amherst Talks. We're getting emails at joneslibrary.org, but then we're also getting the online submittal form, which is, uh, uh, um, you know, there's no email attached to it. So we're really seeing from everywhere, which is great. Um, we were starting to tick down in terms of number of comments we were getting each week. We got, you know, 420 and then 378 and then 216 and then 110. And then we put the renderings out there and then we popped back up to about 200 again. So that's not unexpected and good. But to me, that tells me that people are getting these things because the bulk of those comments came from, actually, we haven't gotten any comments from the renderings that are posted in the library. They've all come in via the other methods, whether it's in person at the farmer's market, um, at the event we just did at Olympia Oaks, 
or through the online method. So I think that's great that we got instant reaction and we weren't relying solely on what's up in the building. Um, we will be getting a dump of teen comments, just so everybody knows, uh, at the end of this week, Friday is the last day of school, at which point we will go collect the comment boards that have been up at the schools. Um, no one wanted to ask the librarians to send us, you know, pictures on a regular basis. So I don't know what that'll look like, but just know there's going to be a dump of comments that have been collected over the last couple of weeks. Um, in terms of uh, keeping the community informed on June 16th, um, design has their second round of feedback, I believe. That's a meeting where they're going to be talking about the second round of feedback. June 21st, I think the JLBC is voting then on the second round on the recommendations. And then June 24th, we're going to receive the updated design schematics. Um, so in terms of keeping the community, and I think, Craig, you did a GoPro of the three library tours. I don't know if there's a plan around how we're releasing or whether we need to talk about what that looks like. So I don't have a release plan. We're still you know, put, putting these small videos together into larger videos. Um, I guess I would defer, my, my initial thought was I would send, it send them over to um, say Christine and, and, and Sharon um, and you, but then leave distribution up to you folks. Okay. The files are very large. Yeah. So by sending, I, I would uh, put them, I would give you a link to a shared file and okay. then you can download them or just share that link. Okay. And you can, I know you weren't able to attend since you have many, many know, going yeah. on. But I mean, for me, because I wasn't, I wasn't a trustee when all of this began and I know that there were library tours. So this probably wasn't Austin's first time going on library tours, but for me, going on a library tour with the library directors and talking to staff and talking to patrons was really illuminating um, on multiple levels. One, uh, seeing other libraries uh, renderings and then seeing their real buildings made me feel better about renderings <laughs> that don't actually capture the life of a building, um, but just also really seeing what other libraries done was super helpful. Um, so I don't know whether either of you have any thoughts or suggestions about what we wanna do with that video or that, Austin. Thank you, Alex. Um, I hope what Craig will do will, will be to send the link to the entire JLBC. Uh, no, no need to send it through subcommittees. And um, Angie, I don't know if it would make sense to, as part of the materials for a JLBC meeting, to post the video to the town, uh, post those videos to the town website. But that's, that's what I think uh, you ought to do with those videos. And grateful to Craig for uh, for for doing that filming. Certainly. Thank you so much. I was so sorry to miss it. Uh, you know, so I'm excited to see the video. You got Great. it. Perfect. And I also I want to give Will a plug. He has assembled the Holyoke video, and it turned out awesome. So I'm excited to share that with you folks. But I want to share all three at the same time. Nice. Thank you, Will. <laughs> okay. Um. So in terms of the updated design schematic, so last time what we did on May 27th was we the designs were presented on May 27th to design. And then on June 1st, we had a public forum and then Sharon presented those designs. And then we took questions that, that went into the um, public feedback. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I am leaving on June 25th and I will be gone through July 14th and I will have super, not at all, <laughs> limited access um, to internet. Um, so I will, not be here for that, um, but I was not needed for that. Sharon did it and Angela ran the meeting, um, but I don't wanna be, I don't wanna do on saying what we should do or picking dates because I won't be here. So I just wanted to put that up for conversation about if we wanna follow a similar format or do something different. Mika. I'm sorry, could you repeat what you just said with the dates? My yeah, so, so yeah, so last time the the designs were presented to design subcommittee on May 27th, and then on June 1st, so before anybody really could do anything with them, we also presented them to the public. And then we're getting them again on June 24th. So the question is, do we want to do a similar format after June 24th, or something different? 
and then what dates because I won't be here. <laughs> so someone else should pick dates, not me. Um, Angela also being a very important part in the date picking because she's the one making all the magic happen. <laughs> yeah. So I guess question one is, do you want to do the same thing? And if so, then dates, but if no, then what different? Can I, can I ask a question from Colliers? I haven't looked at the timeline for the project, but is the window closing on community feedback July 1? Or does this next round of schematic designs kick open a new window for community feedback? So the community feedback, my, my recommendation is we continue to take it in. Whatever the public is interested in, talking about, commenting on, asking about, we keep receiving that. Uh, we don't actually close the window. However, naturally, as the design progresses, certain comments will have less and less impact on the design. So if somebody, for example, if someone makes a comment now about the layout or, you know, in, in a week about the layout, there's very little that will impact. Um, but if they're making a comment about furniture pieces or colors or finished materials or landscaping, that can have maximum impact still. So um, that's how it's it, it'll, it'll kind of wind down. Austin? Alex, thanks. Um, I, I think that uh, the, the way to proceed is to try to replicate as much as you could what happened with the previous iteration. And I would think that actually um, we'd want to consult with Sharon and Sharon and Angie about what date would work for them. But I really liked what you did, what we did the last time, which was there's this really tight window of, we saw them and the public saw them. And um, I think, uh, you know, regardless of the, uh, you know, like how they're gonna fold, how they're gonna fold in, we want as much of that as possible, but we wanna be continually spreading information. So uh, let's, do that in the hope that we'll have some time to assimilate the comments. And certainly uh, it will be valuable that we will have disseminated uh, these revised, uh, revised schematics. Great, so I'll circle back with Angela and Sharon, find the date that works for them. And then if somebody from JLBC can be there, that's great, but the reality <laughs> is I was somewhat superfluous to that meeting, so. <laughs> um, okay, good. Um, another, again, with, with uh, the person at the library who's been hosting. So when we do newsletters, um, uh, the newsletter gets sent to the town to be posted there. The newsletter gets sent to the library for posting on a library site, but then there's also one person within the library who is putting it into the civic edge or whatever it's called, the format that then we can then push to people on Sundays, which is the same thing, Austin, that we used um, up to the vote. That was the sort of informative thing. So that person is going on vacation, um, which means I'll be able to get this week's newsletter, but then the newsletters for, if we were to do one for June 26th, July 3rd, July 10th, we can't use that format. So uh just a heads up to people I, I, don't, I haven't quite figured out what that looks like yet but um just a heads up and then also obviously i'll be gone so i won't be able to do a newsletter on july 3rd july 10th and july 17th so i don't know whether we'll need one i don't know whether someone wants to put something minimally together um but i put that out there for the group <laughs> Um, I think it's been really good and I think it's been really helpful uh, and I think it's unfortunate on the timing, but yeah, Anika, go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, I think that the, I mean, the, the newsletter has clearly been amazing uh, in talking it up, even, you know, in council meetings. Um, I do have some conflicting dates as well that kind of mirror yours, but um, I can do so. Um, I can, I'll do my best to confirm within the next few days and, you know, if possible, would do whatever I can to help out to keep the newsletter um, on, you know, on, on time and fresh as I think it's, you know, it's getting, it's getting a great response. So. And, and I'm wondering maybe, I mean, now that the, I mean, the template's kind of there, it's just a matter of sort of filling in what's been going on. So I don't know whether 
you know, if we'd have one person sort of take it on each week, you know, that might be a resolution. I don't know, but I just, I don't know whether we talk about that at the larger building committee or yeah. it's a pretty small group to try and come up with a resolution. Yeah, that might be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone on board. Yeah. Austin. So I think the newsletter is great. If um, anything that can be done to keep it going, uh, it is not unusual in the town of Amherst for publications to suspend during uh, periods of time. Uh, the community is quite used to keep reading on the local thing that we're, we're not going to be publishing next week because we're away. And um, while I think that the weekly distribution newsletter is great, uh, I think that if uh, we would have skipped two weeks, uh, you know, if that was not doable, then, uh, you know, we'd have a we have more to say in the newsletter after that. So I think if we can do something fine, if we can't do something, we're, we're going to communicate in other ways. We just suspend the newsletter while, you, while you're away. Or we could vote to, uh, uh, you know, not allow you to go on vacation. So those are my proposals. That is not an option, but okay. Sounds good to me. All right. Um, Alex Lopez, you have excellent timing. <laughs> Welcome to the meeting. Can uh, can you hear us? And can we hear you, Alex? I can hear you. Right. We can hear you as well. Thank you. Um, so the next thing um, I wanted to talk about is um, public feedback around the temporary location. Um, we haven't done anything specific to that um, and wanted to um, see if I could volunteer Alex, since he doesn't have a picture and I can't see his face, to take the lead on that and possibly work with the library director around sort of what are the, what are we, what are we asking and what are the parameters um, and, and sort of take the lead on what we might do um, relative to outreach for a temporary location? Yeah, just to, I mean, it would be an honor and a privilege, um, but just to be clear, we are talking about uh, at this point, there is a search for what might be available, right? Um, and so this would be working with the library director to figure out once we are down to a few candidates of what that looks like, uh, then getting feedback from the community on where they want to see. Craig, do you want to speak to that or do you want me to or? I'll defer to you and then. Right, okay. Um, so my sense, Alex, is we're probably not going to have a whole lot of choice because we're, the town is we're working with the town to find buildings. So if we have a choice and we could give the community a choice, that's fabulous. But I doubt that'll be the case, but I could be wrong. I'm not in this. Um, I think, and this is actually why I want you to work with the library director, is I, my sense is it might be more what are people's priorities while we are in temporary spaces in terms of either what they have access to, or is it more important that temporary spaces are, are maybe staffed with fewer people and more staff is like out in the community at events? Like I, I don't even know what the parameters are. So that's why rather than letting my imagination run wild, um, I think maybe getting some direction from the library director about, you know, these are the things that the community can give us feedback on and then taking that and then figuring out a way to go do public outreach around that. That sounds great. So basically we're playing a town-wide uh, version of the game, five books on an island. <laughs> okay, you always have references I barely understand, Alex, but yes, I will say yes. <laughs> okay, um, did anyone else, comments, questions, thoughts about the temporary location? So that, Alex, that our outreach on Craig's calendar ends at the end of August. So we would have until whenever you start through August and I'm, I'm not sure I'm not sure you need the same amount of length of time for outreach around the temporary locations, but I don't know. I will let you, I will let you organize that. Um, and the other thing I wanted to volunteer someone for is Anika. Um, so uh, as you know, from our last uh, JLBC meeting, we're um, requesting changes around the Civil War tablets um, in the design of the, the space design. And so, there has already been some feedback about that that we've gotten from people. And so because you are on the Civil War Tablets Committee and you're on the Building Committee, I thought to the extent that sort of you could be a liaison around if we need to do any particular outreach relative to that or any communication relative to that, I could 
we could ask you to do be be responsible for sort of making sure that that's flowing in a way where everybody feels like they're being heard and does that feel reasonable? Yeah, sure. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Anyone comments, thoughts, questions, Civil War tablets besides that? Okay. Um, and then the next thing I just had around community being informed is our next phase is gonna be design development, which I think Craig, you have our public outreach going from August through October, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And then again, this being my first ever building project and really not knowing what's happening until we're in the middle of it. So is it, can we expect it's going to be more similar to sort of when we got these renderings and then we put them out to people and then people started telling us what they liked or I'm just wondering for us to start thinking about what we want to do for community outreach. Do we need to sort of change what we're doing or any thoughts about what we might need to start thinking about? So design development is actually a pretty exciting time because um, it's, it's when, just as the name implies, that design gets developed further and becomes more and more realistic. Um, once we get to construction documents, which is the next phase, and that would be um, beginning in December of this year, then it becomes more architects and their consultants kind of heads down work with us, but it's much more uh, the focus is documenting the design that everyone's agreed to um, so that it can be built. So the design develop, so schematic design, things are kind of fast and loose. Design development, things start getting more realistic. Decisions start becoming more specific. So instead of, you know, we want the building to be made from some sort of masonry, then we start drilling down to, all right, well, what specific what specific type of masonry and what color range you know what are the details um and so it becomes um those types of discussions so yes in design development to, to answer your short your question more succinctly during design development yes we'll continue to receive presentation material from the design team and we'll be able to share that with the public so i guess i just wanted to hear from the committee about you know we've told the public that um, the community feedback for schematics ends on July 1. And so I guess I'm just looking for on July 2nd, you know, are, are we doing something differently? Are we, what does that look like? Are we, do we continue to collect information from people, but you know, because we told them we like, I, I guess I'm trying to, what's the next sort of expectations that we're setting for public as we continue to get, for people to really acknowledge, for people to understand that we've hit a new phase, it feels like something either visually or something needs to shift. Otherwise people, I'm afraid, are gonna think we're still in sort of the same phase in terms of you can say anything and everything or, yeah, Anika, go ahead, take over. <laughs> say what I'm trying to say better. <laughs> no, I, I don't know that I can. I, I was going to suggest that um, maybe as we get closer, maybe, to the first, then maybe another reminder um, that we're closing into the date. And so therefore, if there is, I, I don't know, even if it's a, a visual that goes out on the second, that's, you know, thank you for your input and stay tuned, you know, um, maybe, you know, something like that. And, and um, it could be, you know, that, so it's not like, you know, you're completely shut down, but you're kind of reminding people of the time that they have thanking them on, on the first and, and stay tuned for next steps. Okay. And not to put a timeline um, on the thing that I just volunteered to do, but I do think that uh, starting the temporary, like starting whatever the outreach is gonna be around temporary in July to August um, is a good time frame of like, we've talked about the building, now we're gonna talk about the process, right? Of while the building is being built. Um, and then that also gives us some time to be able to communicate out some of the decisions that are being made or input that's been considered, et cetera. Thanks, Alex. I think I like, and, and then Craig, if I'm not mistaken, when that ends in August, we then would shift back to design development, like, hey, now we're in the next phase of design development because that's in theory when we would start that. Are you asking the difference between 
say July, the July 1st timeline and the end of July timeline where when design development officially begins? Yeah, like when would we expect, we would, we would probably still continue to have questions of the public because we're just gonna keep on doing things. I mean, there's a point in time where we have to approve the design schematics. So I assume there's a period of time where we could still get feedback, but nothing's happening until. That, yes, essentially. So what will happen is, you know, July 1st, the design team will submit their schematic design drawings. Uh, we'll do two things will happen at that point. It will go to the cost estimators. We'll begin looking at it and developing their cost estimates. And it will also go to say the library building committee to start reviewing and um, looking at it in detail. Then at the end of that cost estimating, now we have a design in hand that hopefully everyone's relatively familiar with. And then we'll also have an estimated cost uh, with those two things, then the, the community or the, the town will be asked to give the design team approval to move to the next stage. And there's also some, uh, some time in there if the cost estimate is high and we need to make some adjustments, there's some time in there to make those adjustments before giving that okay to move into design development. In the background, the, des um, the design team will continue to work on things. Um, so it won't be like they're kind of sitting dormant for the three weeks or four weeks. But um, yes, I guess from our perspective, what we're seeing coming out of them is they'll start producing things for a couple of weeks. Um, and then all of a sudden we'll, we'll have that cost estimate and, and move forward with the decision-making process. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it doesn't sound like, it sounds like we just keep collecting feedback and just try to make clear. Austin, go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Craig. Um, I, I, Alex, uh, to answer your question, I think we should continue to do what we've been doing right through design development. Um, the committee is going to have to be making decisions right throughout design development and uh, both informing the public and getting the public's input. It's going to be useful to those uh, to that process. So my own view is that uh, we continue the outreach process kind of as we have. Uh, right through design, it, it, right through the design development phase. I mean, once design development is over and there you go into construction documents, then I think we're in a very different phase. But through design development, as the committee, it says the building committee itself is saying, you know, we like blue rather than red. Uh, we should be continuing to collect public comment. Alex. Well, and. Um, Collecting public comment can also look differently. Like one thing that comes to mind is uh, that this committee can do the work of turning people out to other committee meetings. Like we don't have to have a separate event, um, but if we know that there are a bunch of, you know, the schematics are coming out and we're going to be seeing that, um, then we want to we want to make it public and do the work of like knowing or of helping get people there. To, to see that. Do you have any ideas around that, Alex? I mean, we're certainly doing that in the newsletter that we're pushing, and it's obviously on the community, like on the calendars, but do you, and when we go out to events, but I mean, do you have any thoughts on ways we might do that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, I think we can think about that collectively. Some of the ones that come to mind are um, sending out flyers to, uh, through the recs department, right? Um, and getting them into campers' hands uh, for key dates over the summer. Um, the uh, Using those same flyers and going to local businesses and saying, here's what's going on with the Jones over the summer. Um, and during the summer, I actually have more time so I can do some of that, yay. Oh yeah, you missed that conversation, Alex, about uh, about somebody helping to pick up the newsletter. So once you're once you're free, you can volunteer for that first newsletter. How's that? Sure. Hey, that's the right answer. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Um, so, does anybody have anything else they want to talk about, discuss? Yes, Austin. So I wonder, Alex, um, when you get back from your holiday, if uh, we could consider writing uh, something for the uh, local newspaper, for the Indy and for the current 
about the process, where we are, what we've learned, and where we're going. And uh, I think it would be a timely and good thing um, to do. Alex, do you have your hand up because you want to do that, or did you just leave that by accident? Nope, definitely by accident. Uh, trying to pull to my house because obviously. So sorry. Right. Nope, all good, all good. Okay. Um. So, uh, anything else around community informed? I guess I should report back that the. Uh, June 8th meeting that we did was, uh, that was the overview of the outreach. I think that was really good. Um, uh, some of the participants we had there uh, made some really nice comments around the work that we've done um, and um, have since actually gotten a lot more engagement from some of the people who were there now that they know how to engage. So I think that was really great. And hopefully people can continue to watch that, that uh, video of how to access things and, and um, do that. So um, our last uh, topic before um, public comment is just our next outreach. We're continuing at the Survival Center and the Farmer's Market. Um, the ambassadors have gotten in on the action and they have um, offered to help table at the Survival Center on Thursdays, which is great. So um, we're gonna have an ambassador there this Thursday, um, and then uh, hopefully they'll continue to do that um, for the next couple of weeks, which is a nice thing. Um, our next event um, out in the community is at Rolling Green on June 24th from 4.30 to 6.30. I encourage people to come. It's a lot of fun. Uh, again, there was, <laughs> you, you might be put to work grilling. One of our volunteers who came for the library actually worked the grill the whole time, which was amazing. <laughs> Another volunteer was was doing games with kids, uh, and then Sharon was wonderfully uh, at the table answering questions. Um, so I appreciate Alex Lopez coming to that, and I appreciate Anika. Thank you for coming to the public outreach uh, forum we did on on June eighth. So thank you both. Um, so um, I guess the other thing is just if people the next meeting. I don't know if you want to wait a month before I come back or whether if someone wants to keep this going and, and schedule the next meeting and, and be the chair for that meeting. Nika? Again, I would love to help. It's just we kind of have these mirroring dates. So I will do my best to follow up with you for sure, confirm by tomorrow. Um, and you know, if, if at all, you know, possible, I'm, if I can, I'll know then, and then I, I'm happy to. Yeah. And I, maybe, maybe I apologize I'll... to the committee for my really terrible timing. This was a year ago, so I had no idea we'd be where we are. It's no more terrible than my timing. So. <laughs> true, true. So does the group just, Anika and I will talk and if Anika is able to run a meeting she'll send out a notice that sounds like a plan for everybody okay okay all right so i'll follow up with um sharon and angela about the forum after the schematics and i'll follow up with anika about seeing if she can schedule our next meeting getting these meetings are getting shorter and shorter does anybody have any questions thoughts comments um before we turn it over to public comment Okay, I see two people in the audience, one of whom is not allowed to speak because they would make a quorum. <laughs> so uh, would our other attendee like to speak or ask a question or make a comment? If so, just signal by raising your hand. Okay, seeing none. Um, thank you everybody for all of your hard work. I appreciate it and um, look forward to seeing all of you. Take I have care. a question. I have a question. I thought you were waving goodbye. Yes. No, I wasn't waving goodbye. I want Craig to clarify something he said because it confused me and I don't think it's accurate. Um, you describe the schematic design as fast and loose. <laughs> and I just, I, I wondered if you could translate that into something other than fast and loose. 
Certainly, yes. Um, I apologize. That that has all kinds of connotations, which I didn't intend. Um, the schematic design is a period of time when the design moves very quickly. Um, and um, yes, and that's it. Whereas uh, design development gets a little more realistic and then construction documentation gets very realistic and very precise. And may I just say, I'm sorry, again, Schematic designs are, quote, realistic. They're not flights of fancy, fancy right? It's not like the architect is just sitting there. Uh, they, they are themselves, quote, realistic. Um, and they may be less detailed and less concrete at the end of the day. But I, I, I just worry that we not convey the impression that these are not serious, realistic documents. Your clarification is absolutely correct. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I see one person who joined the meeting who wasn't, who was there, who came back um, and uh, wasn't there when I asked for uh, public comment. So I just want to give that person an opportunity to raise their hand if they had any public comments or questions that they want to share with us. So uh, one more call for public comment. Okay. Seeing none. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming today, um, and um, have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Thanks.